Welcome to Fairy Tale Access, where the head fairy's quest is to prove that fairy tales do exist in actual time rather than once upon a time. Together, we will unravel the heroes, young and old, who turn dreams into reality. These are the people who still believe in happily ever after. The discoveries will bend even our most cynical non-believers into believing in fairy tales. Hello, welcome to Fairy Tale Access. Today, we're going to unravel a fascinating story about prosthetics. This is just some of the amazing work that's going on at Shriners Hospitals for Children. We're going to meet a patient. We're going to talk about new technology. And to start us out, I have Captain Hook, and he's going to talk to us a little bit about the history of prosthetics. Hello, Captain Hook. Thanks for being here today. Hi, Denise. Nice to see you. Thank you. So, Hook, you were at the Fairy Tale Festival a couple of years ago, and in my quest, I found that you're an avid reader. So, what do most people not know about you? Well, I attended Eton College, where I was an avid scholar and a, an avid reader of Shakespeare, Shelley, and the French Revolution. Oh. The end. Okay. So, Hook, how and when did you get your prosthetic arm? I got it around about 1904 in a wicked duel with that Peter Pan character. Let me know if you see him anywhere. <laughs> I haven't seen him today. But why did you choose a hook for prosthetics? Well, a hook comes in mighty handy. It's very practical on the sea for fishing and dueling. Oh. The end. Okay. Why are so many pirates known for having prosthetics? Well, Denise, it's a wicked life out at the sea. All kinds of sort of shenanigans are going on. The end. The end? Are you guys just klutzy? Is it from sword fights? How are people, how are you guys ending up with prosthetic arms and wooden legs? We have our share of duels. The end. Okay. So when you got your prosthetic, did you have a doctor at sea with you? No. The end. Well, who did the, who did the procedure for you? A doctor on board would be very rare and only found inland. We had usually be performed by the ship's cook. The cook? Yeah, the cook at sea. Oh, how they, did that work out? They usually performed all our amputations at sea, albeit they had a poor success rate. Oh, was the cooking better? Not very much. Oh, sorry. Yes, a slop. Well, where did they get all the materials if you were at sea? We scrounged up whatever we could find spare iron pieces on the boat, leather, and any spare rivets we could put them together with, some knots and uh, forged steel. The end. All right. Well, Hook, I just want you to know that things have come a long way since 1904, and we're going to meet one of the leaders of the industry, Shriners Hospital for Children in Springfield, Mass., and we have a representative coming in, a Mr. William Lemire of the hospital's Board of Governors, so stay with us. We'll be back in two minutes. And Captain Hook, thank you so much for being with us today. Hi. Really appreciate you coming out. Thank you. Today, all around us, a terrible thing is happening. Something precious is being taken away. Childhood. Orthopedic conditions, spinal injuries, burns, and cleft lip and palates can rob children of their happiest days and severely limit their potential. But something good is also happening. Today, at any of the 22 Shriners Hospitals for Children care facilities, specialists and volunteers are at work, caring, mending, researching new ways to give children a brighter future, regardless of their family's ability to pay. It takes the greatest medical skills that set global standards in pediatric care. But true healing takes something else too, something extra special, love. Love puts every child first. Love drives medical breakthroughs. Love makes a hospital feel like home. It's why volunteers give millions of hours. It transports families door to door. It rebuilds a child's confidence. It helps them face their first day back at school. And it keeps healing until they're grown up. At Shriners Hospitals for Children, love comes to the rescue every day. 
And last year alone, it helped give over 120,000 childhoods back. I was one of the children helped by Shriners Hospitals. It was the acts of love and their care that made the difference to my healing. I owe my life to them. If you know a child they could help, contact Shriners Hospitals for Children at 1-800-237-5055. To send your love to the rescue by making a donation, please call 1-800-241-GIFT or visit us at ShrinersHospitals.org. Welcome back to Fairytale Access. And I'm excited to introduce you to Mr. William Lemire from the Board of Governors of Shriners Hospital for Children in Springfield, Mass. Welcome. Thank you, and thank you for having me. Oh, our pleasure. So let's talk about Shriners Hospitals. Could you tell me when Shriners opened their first hospital? Their first hospital uh, opened in 1922. Uh, and in 1925, the Springfield Hospital opened, and in 1968, the Boston Burns opened. So as you see, we have two hospitals in the state of Massachusetts, so we right. are quite lucky that way. How many do you have worldwide? There are 22 hospitals worldwide. There is one in Mexico City, mm -hmm. one in Montreal. And then stateside, we have 20, or in the U.S., we have 20. Uh, there's one in Hawaii. Oh, wow. uh, and the rest are pretty well scattered throughout the country. And what type of services does Shriners offer for children besides prosthetics? Um, there is a, a, a big list of what we offer. A and the Boston one, I I'll hit first. Okay. Um, because... It, they do very specialized treatment for burns. Mm -hmm. Critical burns, uh, all things associated with burns. Um, and, and they're one of the premier burn centers in the world. And they take patients from all over the world. We've had them from Russia, um, throughout uh, Vietnam and, and, and countries like that. So. Mm -hmm. They get their pa some of their patients from outside of the continental U.S., all over. And they really do uh, a lot of the, anything to do with burns. However, they will be doing orthopedic uh, uh, repairs soon. As for, for Boston, for Springfield, mm -hmm. um, we have a very, very large list of things that we cover. And I'll just mention a few of them. Okay. But we have a fantastic uh, pediatric um, rheumatoid arthritis program uh, where our doctor is about the only doctor in the entire Northeast that handles uh, pediatric uh, arthritis cases. Wow. And, yeah, that, we're, we're lucky in that uh, case. We cover the brittle bone disease, mm -hmm. okay? And you hear a lot about that where children, you can barely transport them without their bones breaking. Uh, we do cleft lip and cleft palate. With this here, they, we start treating them when they're like six months old. Oh, that's so great. So by the time they're four or five, mm -hmm. you don't even know that they had a problem with the cleft lip, cleft palate. Uh, we do cerebral palsy treatment, uh, club foot, all types of hand, feet uh, disorders. Um, the uh, and prosthetics, room. the prosthetics is in Springfield as well, is that correct? Yes, we have our own prosthetic uh, lab facility right there. So when the children come in for prosthetic work, uh, technicians that are actually doing it are right there, come up, do all the measurements, take everything, fit it, 
try it again. So we are one of the few hospitals that have the <clears throat> laboratory mm -hmm. for making the various prosthetics. Um, some of the other uh, items that we do is scoliosis, um, knock knee, uh, leg, leg length discrepancies where they have to cut the bone and use a a, a form to, to stretch the leg out oh. over a period of time. Uh, we still do uh, some polio cases. Um, let's see, spina bifida, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, and like spina bifida is a multidiscipline and we basically treat the orthopedic portion of it. Wow. So, so is this that's open? only a partial list of what we do. Okay, and the website that they could get the full list? There's two. two. Uh, one is Shriners Hospital for Children <clears throat> dot org. Okay. Or the blog, which we have, is Springfield Hospital Blog. Or, I'm sorry, Springfield Shriners Blog dot com. <clears throat> right. And both of those have um, a full list of what we do and <clears throat> the uh, Shriners Hospital uh, for Children also has information on how to get in touch with the hospital, which we've got some numbers and everything which we will pass on as part of this show. Okay, great. I think we'll have them on the screen periodically. Well, that, 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 that's nice. So does Shriners take insurance or...? Um, as of a couple of years ago, uh, we started to take insurance. Mm -hmm. uh, we found that uh, after so many people asking us, why don't you take insurance? Um, and then with the economy and we were supporting the hospitals through an endowment fund. Well, with the drop <laughs> of the, the economy, Mm -hmm. And the stock market, our endowment fund went way, way down. So we found that we really needed to support with, with more funds. And so we have started to take insurance, um, but it's a long process because with all of the government and the states involved and the insurance companies, mm -hmm. Uh, there are so many rules, and it just takes time to get everybody on board. Some okay. states are a lot further ahead than we are uh, here on the East Coast. Well, a lot of children come from different countries. Yep. So if a child doesn't have insurance, would they be able to get care at Shriners? Yes. How would that work? Okay. Uh, we take children irregardless of their ability to pay. And we don't consider that at all in the treatment of the kids. Uh, we do clinics in Cyprus, Puerto Rico, the Dominican Republic. Mm -hmm. Now, those children, all the care, including transportation and housing, is covered by the shrine. Wow. Okay. Um, we also do clinics within the U.S. We do them uh, a lot in upstate New York mm -hmm. in Maine. Okay. Uh, way up in the northernmost parts of Maine. So uh, it, it's a lot easier for us to take the docs and, and some nursing staff and other support staff up to the northern parts of Maine than it is for individuals to come down. Okay. And what is Shriners Hospital named after? Uh, Just for those people that don't know. Well, it, it's, it's not really named after anything. Mm -hmm. uh, well, who funds Shriners Hospitals? Oh, okay. 
the we have a a totally separate corporation that covers Shriners Hospitals. It's a 50, 5013C. Mm -hmm. uh, Who raises money to contribute to that? Okay, there's, we have special events run by third party. Mm -hmm. um, up here we've seen a, a judo uh, day run, raise money. Um, our clowns go out and do functions and raise money. So all part the shrine parades or mm -hmm. the pa parades, uh, you know, for the different towns and cities, generally make some kind of a donation. That typically goes to the shrine. Okay, so the shriners are made up of well, the people that contribute to shriners hospitals. Would it be fair to say they're made up of? Masons, which you would have to be to become a Shriner, is yeah, that correct? that is correct. Eastern Star. Yes. Daughters of the Nile. Yep. The Rainbow Girls. Yes. The Malay. Okay. Any others? Uh, there's the Consistory in York Rite. Uh, the Scottish Rite? Yes. So there's um, a number of organizations worldwide that contribute. That contribute. Plus, we also have outside fundraisers. Mm -hmm. um, corporate fundraisers. Uh, we have large donations, wills and gifts, okay, that all those things come in um, uh, to play for raising money. Um, the uh, uh, gun manufacturer in Springfield is, is putting on several fundraisers. Uh, and uh, they do a, a uh, in the spring, they do a, a river plunge. Oh, you know, wow. when, in the Connecticut River, when the water is just barely above freezing. <laughs> that sounds great. So what is the application process like? Okay, right now, there is no, quote, uh, registration application form. Uh, in order to, this is a recent change that just came in. Mm -hmm. In order for a patient to be seen, all is they have to do is call the hospital. Now, I think we can put these numbers up on the screen okay. for people to see. But uh, just to give you some quick ones, for Springfield, Mm -hmm. they, people can dial 413-735-1234 or 800-322-5905. And these numbers will bring a prospective patient or parents directly to an intake nurse who will talk to them, evaluate their problem, and if it's something that is treated by either Springfield or one of our other hospitals, they will make an appointment on the spot. And right now it's usually within two weeks a patient can get in to see. Uh, we're the only hospital that has that set up. For Boston, Mm -hmm. uh, the number is 617-722-3000. We also have a national line, okay. which is 617-222-3000. Okay? Okay. Um, and if somebody has spinal cord problems, the... The best way would be to call national because we do have several hospitals that treat spinal cord injuries. And we have had uh, patients from uh, the Hampton area that were told by hospitals in Boston there was nothing more they could do. Went down to the Philadelphia Hospital and is now walking. Oh, that's okay. fantastic. So uh, you can see our, we have 
the most up-to-date equipment. Mm -hmm. We have uh, a 3D imaging uh, equipment. Oh, wow. It's the only one in the state of Massachusetts. That's fantastic. Okay. We have the digital radiography. Okay. Um, we don't have um, some of the other, like um, MRI. Uh, for MRIs, we send them down the street to Bay State. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so if a but, child went to Bay State to get that, would that also be covered under, if they weren't covered by insurance, would that be covered? Yes, that's covered by the shrine. What if they're coming from out of the area? Is there places for them to stay? Do they get help with transportation? Y yes. Okay. Um, typically, we, we have a couple of rooms within the hospital that if a, uh, when a patient has undergone, you know, real extensive surgery and they're in ICUs overnight and this kind of stuff, there are a couple of rooms available in the hospital. Mm -hmm. However, once they come to the point where they've got a, they really don't need to be in a hospital, but they be, have to be closed. We work very closely with the Ronald McDonald House uh, in Springfield. Okay. And they support us, and we support them because we always have several families in there. Um, and, and another good po question you asked is, what about transportation? And, and for all our patients, irregardless from around here, we take care of the transportation for the child and a parent to go to the hospital. And these are all volunteers with Shriners? They're, they're volunteers with Shriners that typically drive them. However, in some cases, um, we take care of rental vehicles. Mm -hmm. uh, most of the Shrine centers that support us have vans. Oh, wow. Okay, for transporting children to the hospital. Here in New Hampshire, we don't have a van, so our drivers use private cars. Okay. And we always have, try to have two people uh, driving a patient and family. That's very nice. And what about people that are from other parts of the world that may need assistance? How, uh, do they get help with the airlines or? Well, we, if, if right now we're very limited in what kind of patients we take from the outside. Mm -hmm. Other than where we have our clinic, Cyprus, Puerto Rico, and Dominican Republic. Okay. <clears throat> Generally speaking, for patients outside of these areas, the transportation and housing is generally picked up by a sponsor within the U.S. Oh, okay. So that once they get out, they have a place to stay mm -hmm. uh, for, for the interim, okay? Okay. Um, and, and, and like uh, last year, year before, we had a very severely burned patient from Russia, I think it was. And it, it hit the news where the prime minister w went in to see him. That patient needed some very... Uh, serious orthopedic work, so she was transferred to Springfield mm -hmm. for that work. So the various hospitals work very close with each other to provide uh, the, the very uh, extensive care generally required by these children. All right, so for anybody that wants information, they could go to www.shrinershospitals for children.org. That is correct. Or they could go to the other site. The blog, which is Springfield Shriners blog dot com. Okay. Uh, and, and we didn't didn't indicate what the ch age is, but basically it's from pre birth. Mm -hmm. They start looking at it, but generally from birth 
uh, up to age 18, we take in patients. Patients, if they are in our system, we continue care up until the age of 21. But okay. after 18, we, we don't start the care on anybody. Oh, I see. Okay, and um, so the tagline, love to the rescue? Yeah. Sounds like it's just millions of volunteers and Shriners and Masonic groups, yeah. but a variety and, and, and of different people? That is correct. And, and what it is, is it shows that we're trying to rescue these children and get them so they are in a, feel much better about themselves, can have a more normal life, and be a major part of society, mm -hmm. okay? We have uh, coming up uh, a child from New England who is going to be taking part in the Paralympics coming up. Oh, cool. Okay? Uh, she's already a part of the team. So uh, these children can go on and do amazing things. We have kids, children that play football, mm -hmm. basketball, soccer, swimming, and some of them are, are, are making like professional teams. Oh, that's great. So there is so much available for children. Well, I'm uh, glad we could help get the message out today. Well, I, you know. And we're going to meet with one of your patients. To yes. See what she thinks of her stay at Shriners Hospital and talk with her parents in just a moment. So I'm going to take a quick break, but I want to thank you so much for being here, Mr. Lemire, and sharing all this information about Shriners Hospital. And if anybody wants more information, please go to these websites, www.shrinershospitalforchildren.org. And stay with us. We'll be back in exactly two minutes. Yeah. Oh, did you have one more thing? Yeah. They can also call me. Okay. Okay, at 508-366-0183. And I would be more than happy to talk to anybody uh, that might have a potential question. Great. And now you have Mr. Lemire, who will give you his personal phone number and um, be able to talk to you. So please stay with us. We'll be back in two minutes with the star today, Miss Sophie and her parents, and they're from Greenland, New Hampshire. And we'll be back in just a moment. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lemire. Thank you very much for having me. It's a pleasure. Today, all around us, a terrible thing is happening. Something precious is being taken away. Childhood. Orthopedic conditions, spinal injuries, Burns and cleft lip and palates can rob children of their happiest days and severely limit their potential. But something good is also happening. Today, at any of the 22 Shriners Hospitals for Children care facilities, specialists and volunteers are at work, caring, mending, researching new ways to give children a brighter future, regardless of their family's ability to pay. It takes the greatest medical skills that set global standards in pediatric care. But true healing takes something else too. Something extra special. Love. Love puts every child first. Love drives medical breakthroughs. Love makes a hospital feel like home. It's why volunteers give millions of hours. It transports families door to door. It rebuilds a child's confidence. It helps them face their first day back at school. And it keeps healing until they're grown up. At Shriners Hospitals for Children, love comes to the rescue every day. And last year alone, it helped give over 120,000 childhoods back. I was one of the children helped by Shriners Hospitals. It was the acts of love and their care that made the difference to my healing. I owe my life to them. If you know a child they could help, contact Shriners Hospitals for Children at 1-800-237-5055. To send your love to the rescue by making a donation, please call 1-800-241-GIFT or visit us at ShrinersHospitals.org. Welcome back to Fairytale Access. And the star of our show today, Miss Sophie, 
has been a patient at Shriners Hospital, and her parents, Mr. and Mrs. Rand, are here to talk to us about their experience at Shriners Hospital. So, um, why did you, how did you find Shriners? Well, my wife really is credited with most of the work, and um, we, um, we looked at um, a couple different other clinics or facilities. Um, one of them was a um, hospital in Boston, and then Shriners was recommended at a friend of the family, um, Dick Burke is uh, a Shriner, and he recommended that, uh, and he actually sponsored us uh, to the uh, Springfield facility. And so we went to the, um, the, the hospital in Boston, and um, then we went to Shriners, and after that, it was really, um, the decision was fairly easy to make. Hmm. So what were the treatment options? Was that your guiding decision? Was it the facility? The overall feeling that we got at Shriners was, um, I guess if a hospital or a facility of this nature can feel like home, it really felt like home to us. Um, as John said, when we were leaving, we both looked at each other and said, this is the place that we feel that Sophie is going to get the best quality care. And um, just the way we were treating, we treated, we felt was ex ex exceptional. Um, they gave us different treatment options, um, given her condition. And, um, you know, they, they helped us make the decision. Um, but we felt that in the end, the, uh, the SIME amputation, which is what she had, was the best option for her, for us as a family. And they really were with us every step of the way, the whole thing. Oh, wow. And how many, so you only went to a couple of other facilities, or? Yeah, we, um, we went to um, one hospital in Boston, and then we went to Shriners, and I think we had a third one lined up. Our plan was to go to three and then make our decision, but again, after going to Shriners and just the way we were treated and feeling that they had a really good handle on her condition, um, we just said this is where we want to have her surgery done. And how was the surgery? Did they have a, con was it a long surgery or how was the recovery? Did they have a place for you to stay? The surgery itself. It was about four, four hours. And a half, four and a half yeah, four hours. hours. It seemed a lot longer than that, but it was four and a half. It seemed um, a lot quicker than that. It seemed quicker to you, right? <laughs> yes. Um, about four and a half hours. And um, one of us was allowed to stay with her um, in her in her room the entire stay and they gave us hosp uh, hospitals they gave us um, hotels in the area I guess that works with Shriners to give discounts to families that are going through treatments um, to help with the cost oh, and great. I believe there was a Ronald McDonald house too as an option so we had many choices and one of us was with her the whole time and um, I was able to go with her into surgery and um, it was, she was calm the entire time, which was, which calm? was wonderful. Really? We were a nervous rock, but she, of was, she was fine. <laughs> they handled her wonderfully, and probably one of my fondest memories, if you can have a fond memory from your child going through surgery, mm -hmm. is just the way they treated her in the operating room. Um, they wheeled her in, and as they were putting her under, everyone, they asked what her favorite song was, and at the time she said, Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star. And the anesthesiologist and everyone in the operating room sang Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star to her along with her as she fell asleep. And I mean, it was so emotional. I left in tears, not just because of what she was going to go right. through, but just the caring in the hospital on every level from, you know, her surgeon, uh, Dr. Devarek, to the nursing staff, to the family life people that were there by our side every step of the way, um, Brock her prosthetist and, you know, um, orthotic division. It's, it's, been, it's been wonderful from start to, we were just there two days ago just to get a fitting on her prosthesis. Oh, wow. So we're thrilled. So Sophie, how old are you? Seven. Seven? Did you just recently turn seven? Yeah, there you go. Yesterday. Yesterday? <laughs> Happy birthday. Thanks. So what grade are you going into? Second. Second? Um, and what did you have done at Shriners? Um, my foot cut off. You had your foot cut off? Wow. Did you bring something to show me today? Mm -hmm. 
that's what her foot looked like. Um, she was born with a condition called fibular deficiency, or mm -hmm. sometimes it's called fibular hemimelia. Um, basically, she was born without her fibula in her right leg. And she has a tibia, <laughs> um, but her tibia is shortened and bowed outward. And then her foot, she had a partial foot, as you can see, was attached sideways onto the leg. So what they did in the Siamese amputation was they removed the foot. Mm -hmm. So now she is obviously fitted for a prosthesis. Oh, wow. Do you have your prosthesis on? And I understand that you like colors, and you picked a special design for it. Is that right? Can I see? Wow, that's beautiful. And you picked that design? Yeah. Yeah, before she gets a new prosthesis, we spend a lot of hours looking for fabric, because what they do is um, it's an option to have fabric laminated onto the leg, so you can have fun. Or and you could just have or you could just have plain, so she doesn't has a choice. It doesn't look like your skin. It doesn't? Mm. <laughs> no. Well, that looks like a really cool tattoo. So she can change and it up. And you can change it? <laughs> That's awesome. So what do your friends think? Does anybody even notice anymore? No? Not much? So what do you do? Do you play? What do you do with your friends when you're hanging out? Play dolls. You play dolls. What else? In our swimming pool. Oh. Did you say you play soccer? You play soccer too. Mm -hmm. And basketball. And basketball. And I understand that you're involved in music. So what do you play? Can you tell our audience what you play? The violin and the piano. Wow. Um. So, did you have fun, any fun, when you were at Shriners? Yeah. Were the people really nice? Can you talk so that our audience knows? So somebody else that's in your position wouldn't be afraid to go? Yeah. Would they be? Or would they have? No. No? They would have fun? Yeah. And they'd feel better fast? Yeah. Because you said it felt like no time at all, right? You said it felt like no time at all when you were at the hospital? Yeah. Well, that's good. And then, so again, you just celebrated your seventh yes. birthday? Mm-hmm. Yesterday? Yeah. Oh, well, we have a little surprise coming in for you. Oh. <laughs> oh From our friends. Yeah. <laughs> Over at Chick -fil -A. Eat more chicken. You know what he said? He said Chick fil A at Nashua Pheasant Lane Mall has invited you and your entire family to lunch. Oh, a oh nice. Free lunch. And they have some other surprises cooked up for you over eat there. More chicken. I know. <laughs> Do you know why the cow wants you to eat more chicken? You don't know why? Because. They make hamburgers out of cows. So he's trying to save his hide. <laughs> so he runs around and he says, eat more chicken. But look at this. He doesn't spell very well. Do you think yeah. you can help him with that? <laughs> well, I want to thank you all so much thank for you. coming on thank today you. and sharing your story. And it's great to see that Sophie's doing so well. And I hope you have a great afternoon at Chick fil -A. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. My pleasure. And if anyone would like more information about Shriners Hospitals, again, you can go to www.shrinershospitalsforchildren.org. We'll see you next time on Fairy Tale Access. Thank you. Thank you.